Have you ever heard of a paper armor that can withstand up to 100 pounds of weight? That's cardboard, one of the smartest inventions in the world of packaging. Born from fast-growing, softwood trees with strong, long fibers, cardboard goes through a strict series of processes to become a material that's both lightweight and tough. Thanks to its special folded design, it absorbs impact and resists deformation better than many harder materials, making it an ideal shield for goods in transit. Behind its simple appearance lies a complex industrial journey, from harvesting raw materials to precise cutting and folding, all the way to final packaging. At every stage, accuracy and quality control are top priorities, ensuring that each sheet meets strict standards of strength, flexibility, and load resistance. And in this video, we'll follow the rarely seen journey from tree trunk to shipping box to uncover how this thin, yet incredibly resilient material is made. Even though it's made entirely from paper, cardboard is carrying the weight of an industry worth hundreds of billions of dollars. In 2023 alone, the global cardboard packaging market was valued at over $160 billion. Each seemingly simple box actually represents an entire economic value chain stretching from raw forest resources to global logistics networks. At the same time, more than 240 million tons of paper and cardboard are produced every year worldwide, a staggering figure that reflects how essential this material has become to the consumer economy. From food packaging and household goods to industrial products, e-commerce, and even healthcare, cardboard plays a vital role in every corner of the modern supply chain. Its versatility has made it one of the most widely used and influential materials in the world today. Did you know that the lightweight boxes we hold in our hands used to weigh hundreds of kilograms? That's because, before becoming cardboard, they were once tall pine, eucalyptus, or spruce trees growing in forests. The journey of cardboard production begins in managed industrial plantations, where fast-growing tree species are cultivated in cycles and harvested in a controlled manner to ensure long-term sustainability for the ecosystem. Trees that meet quality standards are cut down, trimmed, and transported to the factory using trucks or conveyor systems. There, they enter the first stage of processing, debarking. Powerful debarking machines strip away the rough outer bark, revealing the clean inner wood. Next, the logs are broken down into small wood chips using rotary knives or sawtooth grinders, increasing their surface area and making them easier to handle in later steps. These chips are then screened to remove unwanted debris and stored temporarily in enclosed facilities. From these seemingly raw bits of wood, an entire modern production chain begins. Once the wood has been chipped, the pieces are sent into large industrial digesters where high heat and pressure break down the wood's natural structure. Under the action of an alkaline solution, lignin, the substance that binds wood fibers together, gradually dissolves, freeing the intercellulose fibers. The result is a light brown slurry known as pulp. Though still rough and uneven, this pulp forms the foundational material for making cardboard. The pulp is then washed, screened, and refined to remove any remaining impurities. This process not only transforms the wood into a more flexible form, but also determines key properties of the final paperboard, such as its purity, strength, and base whiteness. From these individual wood fibers, the material begins its transition into the world of shaping technology. From its liquid and shapeless state, the pulp enters the most critical stage, transforming into a sheet of paper. The diluted slurry is evenly pumped onto a fast-moving wire mesh belt, a massive conveyor covered in tiny holes. To further shape and strengthen the sheet, it moves through a press section made up of heated steel rollers, each precisely calibrated for pressure and temperature. Every roller has a distinct role, flattening the surface, removing excess moisture, parameters like web speed, press force, edge tension, and surface smoothness are automatically adjusted to prevent tearing, blistering, or edge misalignment during large-scale production. 
Next, the sheet is fed into a drying system made up of massive heated drums. These drums rotate steadily, transferring heat through indirect contact to gently evaporate the remaining water. As the paper dries, it passes through final shaping rollers before being wound into large rolls known as base paper. Depending on the design, this paper will later become either the corrugated inner layer or the smooth outer face of a finished cardboard sheet. Following the base paper roll is one of the most crucial steps in giving a cardboard box its strength, forming the corrugated layer. In this stage, the paper is fed between two steel rollers with matching grooves that spin in opposite directions. Under high pressure and heat, the paper is shaped into evenly spaced waves, either sinusoidal or V-shaped, depending on the design. This structure boosts vertical strength without adding extra weight. The shape, height, and spacing of the waves can all be adjusted to match the intended use of the final product. That's how a thin sheet of paper is turned into a material that can handle serious pressure. Now here's a question for you. If you could come up with your own way to make a paper box stronger without making it heavier, what would you try? Once the corrugated layer is shaped, it moves directly to the gluing section. Here, an automated adhesive system applies a thin layer of hot glue precisely along the wave crests. The accuracy of this glue placement is critical. It determines the overall strength of the entire cardboard sheet. Immediately afterward, the first liner sheet is pressed on from below, followed by the top liner from above. These layers are then passed through a set of pressure rollers to firmly bond them together. The freshly glued sheet is gradually cooled using a system of air blowers and support rollers. The result is a three-layer or five-layer piece of corrugated cardboard with a uniform structure, ready for the next stage of printing. The finished cardboard sheet then moves on to processing, depending on its intended use. In many cases, boxes need to be printed with logos, barcodes, or usage instructions for commercial packaging. Printing doesn't happen at every facility. It's usually done at plants with integrated lines or at specialized packaging workshops. Here, flexographic printers with soft printing cylinders apply raised images directly onto the cardboard surface. This process is fully automated, allowing for fast, consistent printing with precise control over every detail's position. The sheet is pressed against a rotating cylinder while ink is evenly distributed by a doctor blade and transferred to the surface under controlled pressure. To ensure quality, sensors monitor ink coverage, sharpness, and drying in real time. Right after printing, the surface is cured using UV lamps or forced heat, preparing it for the next step, shaping. Once the cardboard sheet has been printed and surface checked, it moves on to the cutting and forming stage, the key step that transforms flat material into a three-dimensional box. Depending on the type of product being packaged, manufacturers choose between high-speed automated lines or semi-manual systems tailored for specific orders. The first part of this stage involves slotting and scoring. The sheet passes through vertical cutting rollers that create slots defining the flaps of the box. Immediately afterward, scoring wheels press lightly into the surface to mark fold lines, ensuring the box can be folded cleanly without cracking or damaging the corrugated layer inside. The spacing of the slots and the depth of each crease are digitally controlled to match the exact design programmed into the system. For boxes with special features, such as handles, pop-up lids, air release vents, or curved edges, the sheet goes through a die cutting machine. These machines use pre-shaped cutting dies and apply pressure through rotary or flatbed presses to cut the entire box outline in a single, swift motion. Details like slanted notches, cord holes, or locking tabs are also precisely handled at this stage. Once shaping is complete, the cardboard pieces are stacked neatly and undergo a basic sensor check to ensure consistency before moving to the next station. This is the final preparation step before the cardboard box takes its complete form. Each production batch must pass a quality inspection before it can be packaged. Specialized testing machines evaluate the box's resistance to vertical and side pressure to ensure it won't deform during use. 
sensors scan the thickness, flatness, and consistency of each cardboard sheet. Any box that fails to meet the standards is automatically removed from the line, maintaining stability and uniformity across the entire shipment. Boxes that pass the inspection are sent straight to the packing line for batch processing. An automatic folding system flattens each box and arranges them into fixed count bundles. Depending on size and order requirements, these bundles may be strapped, shrink-wrapped, or packed into larger containers for easier transport. Integrated counting and weighing systems on the line ensure each shipment meets the specified standards. For large-scale orders, the cardboard bundles are stacked on pallets, wrapped securely, and labeled with ID codes for tracking and traceability. This packaging process not only optimizes storage space, but also ensures every unit leaving the factory is ready for distribution and final use. You might think cardboard boxes have only one life, used for packaging, then thrown away. But in modern factories, that's just the beginning. After completing their job, these boxes embark on a second journey, quiet, but incredibly important. At recycling centers, used cardboard is carefully sorted to remove contaminants like tape, staples, or bits of plastic. The cleaned material is then shredded and mixed with water to form a slurry of recycled pulp. Filtration systems remove any remaining impurities, yielding clean pulp ready to re-enter the base paper production cycle. Thanks to this process, millions of tons of raw material can be reused instead of being extracted from natural forests. Recycling not only cuts down on costs and energy consumption, but also plays a major role in reducing carbon emissions. That's why more and more modern facilities are adopting closed-loop recycling as part of a sustainable strategy, not just for economic benefit, but as a commitment to environmental responsibility. Recycling is often praised as one of Carton's greatest advantages, but is it truly as green as the marketing suggests? The production and consumption of cardboard still leave behind a significant ecological footprint. To create those seemingly simple sheets, humanity harvests millions of trees each year, consumes billions of liters of water, and burns through thousands of megawatt hours of electricity. What's more, not every piece of carton is recycled properly. A large portion ends up discarded with contaminants, soaked in oils, mixed with waste, or exposed to moisture, making it far less recyclable. And that's without counting the emissions from processing plants or the massive costs of transportation and sorting in major cities. Are we placing too much faith in a material that comes with its own limits? As online orders multiply and the demand for packaging continues to surge, the real question is no longer simply, can it be recycled, but rather, how will we take responsibility for the choices we make? From towering forest trees to the perfectly folded edges of the delivery box you opened this morning, behind that thin layer of paper lies an intricate chain of industrial processes where every cellulose fiber is monitored down to the smallest detail. Every corrugated fold is pressed with precision and every carton box is shaped to meet billions of daily needs from transport and storage to the protection of goods. The journey of cardboard is a powerful example of how nature, technology, and sustainable thinking come together to create some of the most essential items in modern life. We often see those boxes as mere throwaways once a delivery is opened. Yet in truth, they are the outcome of an entire global production system where natural resources, human ingenuity, and labor converge. If this video gave you a new and deeper appreciation for something as familiar as a cardboard box, share your thoughts in the comments below. 
and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more fascinating behind-the-scenes journeys waiting to be explored.